Good evening. Good evening. Y'all come on in. Come on in. We do not own the rights to the music that's playing in the background, but we definitely love it and enjoy it. I pray everybody is doing well. Y'all come on in. We're going to go ahead and start sharing. If you haven't started, started your watch party or start sharing now, you can go ahead and start now. Uh, good evening to everybody. I pray everybody is doing well. You're doing good. Everybody is healthy. You're staying safe. All that good stuff. Uh, again, the music that's playing in the background is not my music. Um, but we do love it and enjoy it. Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing really quick. And again, I pray everybody is doing awesome. Ah, give me just a second. Y'all start sharing too. Start your, your little watch parties or whatever. Let's pass the word of God around. There is enough out here for all of us to um, to share God's word because we all need to hear it. Everybody needs to listen to what God is saying in this time, in this season. We need to make sure that we are passing that love, the love of God around. Um, and I was trying to turn this up as loud as I could, but I guess I can't. Come on, sir. And I pray y'all have had an, a great day. That your day has been what you have had it, uh, what God has had it to be. Yes. Give me a second, child. I'm still trying to to share. Come on, sir. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but this is I Need Thee <clears throat> by uh, Bishop, well, it say Pastor Marvin Winans, but I call him, he may be Bishop. Um, good evening to you all as well. Um, and again, I pray everybody is having a great day, that y'all day is going wonderful, or your evening is going wonderful. Oh, that go to volume. I'm sharing, so give me a second. I'll turn it down after I get through sharing. And then we'll go through all the preliminary stuff. Yeah. I need a tambourine now. Um... But God, listen, but God, um, but God, listen, you're still having a good day because you're still breathing. You're still breathing, so you're still having a good day, okay? Anytime you're still breathing, <laughs> you're having a good day. May not be the day you want. You may have had a bad, something has happened that you're not, you know. But it doesn't mean it's because you're still living. You're on top of the dirt. The dirt on, ain't on top of you. Um, hold on, y'all. I'm going to turn this down. Cause, listen, I want a tambourine. I want a tambourine. Let me do this. Come on. It's running slow. Just a little while to sing it. Just a little while to wait. Oh, just a little while. Let's back and start a dance from here. I'm trying to move this little thing. Let's see if I can grab it. They have some chat.
Um, but I, I, again, I pray everybody is having a wonderful evening. Y'all staying safe and y'all doing well. Um, and I pray that everything is going well with everybody, with your day. It's getting better. This is not the end. This is not the end. This is not the end. I will say it. This is not the end. This is just a, a storm that we go through and we just going to come out at the top on top. Um, I'm sharing. So I'm trying to turn this down and share at the same time. So y'all give me just a second. Um, but we're grateful to God for what he's getting ready to do in this Bible study, what he, how he's about to handle this Bible study. Father God, we come to you as humbly as we know how. We thank you for allowing us to make it this far today. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, for keep on watching over us, for keep on leading us, for keep on doing the great things that you have done for us. We thank you for just being God. We thank you just for just watching over us as we travel up and down the dangerous highways. We thank you, Lord, for just keeping us in our right frame of mind. We thank you just for our life, our health, our strength. We thank you for our daily activities that you're allowing us to do to be able to comb my hair, to be able to put get ourselves dressed, to just be amongst the living one more time. And we know, Lord, that without you, we are nothing. And with you, we are everything. And we just want to be so careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor that you deserve. And we thank you for it all. Whatever you have me to say or whatever is said in this Bible study, I pray that it helps someone to for them to go on and see what the end is going to be. In Jesus' name, I pray right now. We love you so much, and we thank you for it all. Amen. Bishop is coming, but um, at this time, you got me. <laughs> so um, welcome to the New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Tuesday night Bible study. Um, I've, I'm saying he's coming, but he's going to come and just listen in tonight. Um, he asked me to do Bible study tonight. I pray that you all stay on and I pray that whatever is said tonight is helpful to you and you can carry on with you. Don't go because it's me. Um, it's about the word of God. Um, it's being, uh, put out there being set forth. Um, if you have any prayer requests, you have any comments, you have something that needs to be, um, you have questions about, please don't, don't feel scared to post it or to say anything i can still see it um and if you have not already started sharing tonight please start sharing um and i pray that whatever is said tonight that it is helpful to you i'm still trying to share so y'all may see me kind of like still trying to because you know my little situation over here is a little different um so we already don't gave god his his um his credit i love to do that to give god his credit because if it wasn't for him what would we be um, but tonight, I, well, when Bishop asked me earlier to do Bible study, I, you know, I always, when he asked me to speak or asked me to, to do something, I always go to God first and I make sure whatever is needed to be said comes from him and not from me. This is nothing that this is coming through me, but it's coming from him. And I want whatever is to be said to be helpful. Um, so again, when he asked me, I was like, Ooh. Bishop, you know I have to be. I got to be obedient to what you said. Um, so, what, which is what I did when he asked me. He said, "Could you, would you do Bible study tonight?" And I was like, "Well, whatever you need me to do, I'm, you know, I'm here to help." Um, I've been busy like all day. Like <laughs> this is probably like really the first time I sat down since probably about one something today. Probably about one something. So this is like my first time being able to sit down because I've been busy. And so when God, um, when he asked me that, I act, I went to God and I asked him, what do you want me to say? What is it that you, good evening to y'all that just joined in. What is, what is it tonight that you want me to say to your people? And so um, <laughs> he asked me to talk about being obedient. Okay. Um, and that goes a whole lot of ways when we're talking about being obedient. Being obedient is something that we don't like to do <laughs> on a lot of different parts of life, but we have to do it because it's what's required. It's what's we, what we are supposed to do. So when you're talking about being obedient, um, that's something that <laughs> when people say, I don't want to obey, I don't want to, I don't want to obey nobody. I don't want, I want to go by my own rules, but the word in life, let me start out with saying where in life would you go where you don't have to be, um, obedient to somebody. Let me put it in that term with this, since we're talking about being obedient, where in life can you not be obedient? Like, can you go to your job and not be obedient to the rules and regulations at your job? 
Um, can you go to the grocery store and not obey, obey the rules that go that they have set at the grocery store? Could you go to the courthouse, to any government office and just do what you want to? Can you go to somebody's house and do what you want to at somebody else's house? You're always going to have to follow somebody's rules. You might not like it. You might not care about it. You might not want to do it. It may not be a big deal to you. I'm going to break the rules. I'm, I'm not going to be, I don't have to do what they say. I'm grown. Grown people have to be obedient as well, okay? And us as believers, us as Christians, have to be obedient to God. Again, it may not be something that we like doing. It may not be something we want to hear about. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. We don't want to um, be... Uh, we always want to be an authority. We never want to be the people that want to uh, follow. We always want to be in the lead position. We always want to be the superior. We always want to be the ones that got to be on top, but never the one that wants to follow and obey rules. How can you, how can you lead if you're not a follower? How can you say, I love God, but I don't obey his word? How can you say... Um, Jesus is all of these things that I know that he, he is to be, but I don't obey his word. I don't do what God's word is telling me to do. You got some people say the 10 commandments. Okay. There's 10 of them, but I'm just going to obey three because the other seven I'm going to do anyway. That's not being obedient to God's word. You can't say I'm just going to, there's 10 commandments, but I'm just going to do three, maybe five of them do half. And then the other half, and I'm going to pick the half I want. Like, I'm going to pick the five that I want to be obedient to. That's not how obedience is supposed to be. When God is telling us to do something, we're supposed to do what God is telling us to do. Good evening to everybody. We're supposed to be obedient to what God is telling us to do. If he say, um, I want you to, and again, y'all know on God's day, I talk about um, us listening to God's word and us obeying his, going by what God is telling us to do. When, When the pastor gets a vision from God and he tells you this is what God is telling me I need you to do we're supposed to be obedient because why the man of God is it has told you that it came from God it came from him it didn't come from this is not personally me I just feel like this is just gonna be a good fit for you I think this is what you should be doing no 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 no. God want us to be obedient to our superior to our pastors to our leaders to whoever is in charge you might not like it you might not like the way that it's going. You might not like what's being said or how it came down to you, but you have to be obedient. I remember I was talking about this um, last week or maybe, yeah, last week because I haven't been on God's Day this week and I do apologize. But last week I was talking about in the, uh, we all have an assignment. What is our assignment? And, and, and I had an assignment a few months back. Oh, it was so hard. It was hard because it, it first of all, it shocked me. God um, gave me, a, gave, he came to me in a way that, when he came to me, when, it, when he gave me this, this vision he had for me or this assignment, let me say, let me switch that. This assignment that he had for me, I wrestled with it. It woke me up in the middle of the night and I wrestled with it for the longest. And I was like, God, what you want me to do with this? Like, this is information or this is something you giving me that I'm not even ready for. Like, I didn't think, you know, God was going to get me. I, you know, I heard about these things, but when he actually, it actually happens to you, it's kind of like, hmm, what you do with it? So, of course, I asked around. And I did some research and did my own little thing because I wanted God to, I wanted to be obedient to what God was telling me to do. So I wanted to make sure I was going, I was handling it the right way, the way God wanted me to. So anyway, as time went on, I decided that, um, let me be obedient to God's word because when God, hey, good evening. When God gives you an assignment, it's best that you do what God is telling you to do. Or Bishop was talking about Sunday. He will whoop you. And he asked us who all got whooped by God. I did. I have because when you know better, you do better. And and once you once you aware or you know something, God is going to um, hold you accountable for the things that you know. Okay, so by us just going by, oh, I ain't gonna do what God said. I ain't gonna do it. And I know it was nothing but God because when He gave it me this assignment, I was in I was sleep like I mean gone dead to the world sleep it was about three something in the morning he woke me up out of my sleep and you know most of the time when you just wake up like that god is trying to is he's speaking to you he's trying to tell you something most of the time like we you know we got to know when that voice but this never happened to me so when he woke me up out of my sleep like i said i did ask around did some uh, ask some questions did some research and god was telling me you have to do you have to speak 
you have to say, you have to do what this assignment is telling you to do. And when I did, was the, was the assignment uh, uncomfortable? Absolutely. Was it something that I've never seen before? It, it was something I've never witnessed in my life. Was it something that I felt like I had to do? Absolutely. Because I knew if I hadn't done it, because I've done some things that God told me um, to do and I didn't do it. And I got reap- I had I got repercussions behind it, um, and and because we're not being obedient to God's word, like I said, when Bishop asked me to do Bible study tonight, I was like, all right, like I'm come walking in the door because I, you know, I had an appointment today. I'm trying to, I'm dealing with a whole lot of stuff. And I was like, oh, I got a lot going on. And when he asked me, I was like, oh, yes, I have to do what God, yeah. If God told you to do, it, let me do what God is telling me to do. Again, I don't want to get whooped by God. I did that. I've been there. Um, back some years ago, I allowed a situation to pull me out of church. And when I put lady pull me out of church, I blamed everybody besides myself, or I blame people or I blame the church versus me, um, versus me trying to fix it and you know, or whatever. So anyway, I pulled myself out of church for 10 months. And within those 10 months, it was a lot of things that went on. And I was like, Lord, and you know why he did me the way he not at the, at that time, my dad had, my daddy had passed away. Um, I had lost, I think I had lost my job at the time. I think I had lost my car at the time. And I was on the verge of moving out of my apartment because you ain't got no job. You can't move there. Okay. You can't stay here. So <laughs> I did all of that. And within, within 10 months of me stepping away and saying, you know what? I ain't got to deal with that. Yada, yada, yada. Doing all of these things. God started removing things from me that was necessity. Some things that my daddy, like I'm the youngest, like my daddy, you going to remove my daddy from me? Like what? What? But I, I, I decided to do some things that was not, and God was telling me, you need to find somebody's church. It may not be this particular church. It may not be that one over there. It may not be, but you need to get in somebody's church. And when I did, everything started getting back in line. You started, um, you, of course, you're going to still go through some things. You're still going to go through some uh, situations, some ups and downs, some storms and all of that. You're still going to go through that. But at the same time, it's being obedient to what God was telling you to do. Because when I wasn't obedient to him, I was losing things. I was I, I was going through some stuff. I was trying to figure things out and I couldn't figure out what was going on because I, I let God go. I let I was just like, it is what it is. God, you know, I love you, but I'm going to love you on Sunday morning from my house. I'm going to stay in my apartment. I'm not going to go nowhere. I'm not going to me and my child. We just going to do this. And when when push came to shove, I realized God was trying to get my He said, this is not what you because you know better. You know you're supposed to be in church from from because you've been you grew up in church. This is all you know. So how are you gonna step away from me? You let a situation stop you stop me from stop you from serving me. You gonna allow that? Okay. How how about I do this because you're not being obedient to me? You know you're supposed to be at Sunday school. You know you're supposed to be um, in the choir. You know you're supposed to be doing something, some auxiliary or doing something to God's word. Now when I did. Step back into church. Things start lining back up again. Good evening. Things start lining back up again. God started working things out for me. You learn how to pray more and pray better. You learn how to have a better relationship with God. You don't allow anybody or anything to stop you from going to the house of the Lord unless it's something that you just cannot change. You don't allow nobody to change you or your relationship with God because you're obedient to his word. When he told you to do something, you just said, okay, God, I'm doing it. It may, like I said, your assignment is going to be uncomfortable. The things God is, is sending in your face, he's going to tell you to do some things that you're not even really, like, that's not even my feel. I'm not a singer, but you want me to sing a song? Do what God is telling you to do. And when you don't do it, you're going to see the whoopings that God give you. And you're just going to be like, why am I getting a whooping from God? Why am I going through these things? Why is God taking me through these changes? Why can I not understand? Because you pulled yourself away from God. No, don't ever let anybody turn away. Turn you away from God, from his love. You can still say, I love God and I care about him and all of that. But the things God has already set in line for your life, you have to be obedient to what he said for you. Don't let nobody step, pull you away from church. Don't let nobody stop you from going and serving God. None of those things matter. That relationship between you and him is personal and you have to be obedient to his word. Okay, so I'm gonna back up. We're talking about being obedient. Talk about being obedient. I know you probably already heard me because you was... <laughs> um, you're talking about being obedient. So obedience means to hear God's voice. I just talked about that. By hearing God's voice, accept, it, accept his authority and do what he says. I just talked about that. 
That's in Exodus 15 and 26. Obedience may be voluntary or involuntary. Voluntary obedience alone can be accepted, acceptable to God. What does disobedience mean? It means to ignore God's voice. You hear God's voice. God, God is telling you to do these things, but you decide I'm not going to do it. You, I, yeah, I don't want to. I, I, don't, I don't like talking to them. I don't want to say nothing to them. They're weird. They got a weird conversation. I don't like nothing about them. So I'm not going to say anything to them, even though it may be laid on your heart to, to say, I just want to help you. You don't even know if they need any help, but God told you to be obedient to what he said. Do he's laid. He, our assignments can be so simple as somebody walking in the doors of the church. And we had this Bible study some, um, a couple of years ago, I believe where, Folks walk inside of a church, but because the person don't look like you, how many people grab their purse and they put it up under their arm or they, they scoot closer to their neighbor that they know because you don't know what this person over here, uh, who, where they come from or who they are. God can send an angel sitting right there. They could just look like this. They could just look regular or look worse than you. But because they came inside the church and didn't look like you, we treat them different. Your assignment could be to be, uh, guys, oh, look, I'm sorry to say God is a good evening. Your assignment can be to be, uh, have a conversation with this angel or to witness. We walk inside in and out, out, out of, uh, in and out of the grocery stores. We walk in and out at the gas stations. We do all of these things. And God has told us to do some things while we're there. We bypass. We can be witnessing to somebody. I know. And, and, and people that you don't even think that they talk about God because they haven't talked about God your whole life. But soon. Soon as, soon as you walk, you, uh, you, they going through some things, you will see it pop up. God, this and God, that. you just be like, I didn't even know they knew who God was. They going through We're a day and time now where life is changing by the second. Like you can talk to somebody. I see so many people say, I just talked to you yesterday. I just talked to you this morning, but guess what? They're gone now because we, we want to do stuff on our time. And, um, it was late on my heart last week. To my oldest niece, my sister's oldest daughter. It was laid on my heart to talk to her last week, but I got so busy with doing other stuff, I didn't get a chance to call her. So I called her Saturday, and we talked for the longest. But I told her then, I said, it was, it's been laid on my heart to talk to you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. I've been there losing a parent, I, both parents. I know, I know what that's like. But I just wanted to get it out to her and let her know um, that I'm, I'm still here, that I'm still, but I, it was laid on my heart and I don't want too many days to keep passing by. And I did not do what was laid on my heart. God sends you some uncomfortable assignments. And when he do, please do them. You're not going to like it. You, you probably don't even care to do it, but sometimes it, why is it going to be comfortable? What are you going to be comfortable? With? Anything that's worth If you got the work so easy to get in, it's just worth, it's easy to get. It's not even worth it. You're going to work hard for something. When you raise my I'm working hard for my money. Absolutely. When you working, you working hard for your money. You trying to get all your money together. You trying to get, listen, I'm going to work to get my money. I'm finna hustle. I'm finna do whatever I got to do to get my money together. But we are so, we so disconnected with God. So disconnected with him. We don't know his voice. We don't know when to be obedient to what he's telling. Because we, we want to do our own thing. We're so used to doing whatever we want to whenever we get ready. We're so used to pointing our finger and telling folks off and working our necks and snapping our fingers. And we think we don't did something. Or uh, behind the iPads, behind the, the phone, or laptops or whatever. We just typing up some stuff and just going back and forth with somebody. And folks is dying every day. Folks, is dying every second. How, how many times have y'all seen this week? I'm just talking about from, because it surprised me, one of my um, good family with, uh, friends from last, um, I've been knowing him for years. He was just on Facebook the day he passed. And everybody was just like, well, you was just on Facebook. Nobody knew that this man had was going, whatever was happening with him. I don't even know. But my point is, you can be on Facebook now, and then five minutes later, you're gone. What's the beef for? What's the disobedience for? Our time now is to get right with God. You don't know where this virus is going to touch. You don't know who is going to touch. Some people done had and haven't said a word to you. Um, some people don't haven't got it. And uh, they've been around some people that have it. But being grateful to God that God has kept you. And, it, and a lot of times we just we do we treat. What if God what if we what if God treat us like we treat him? Like we got when we get time, we're going to go and serve him. When I get time, I'm going to go and, 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 and do what he asked me to do when I get time. 
There's no when I get time. The time is now. Like, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? We get dressed up. We get ready for a party. We get ready to go to the club. We getting ready to go out. And we we ready for that. But when it comes down to God, we drag. We take our time. We don't want to be obedient to the time that's set at God's house. We don't want to be on time to the assignment God gave us at God's house. We don't want to be on time to do what God is telling us to do on the outside of the church. We don't want to do anything that God is telling us to do when the pastor tells us to do something. We want to do it at our own time. God is he tired of playing with us. He tired of playing with us. He tired of us being disobedient. He tired of us trying to tell somebody, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if your who said it. God can come down himself and I'm still not going to do it. Try God. Try him and tell him what you're not going to do. I want you to go ahead and try him. I already told you I've been through that. I know what God can do. I know how he can turn you down. He can whoop you and make you do right. And if you don't want to do it, and if you have to, let me say this. If you're not being nice to somebody else, you do know by the way you feel about somebody. It can, it can hurt your blessings in the long run. That can still affect you in the long run. Be careful how you're treating people. God can tell you to t- t- change your attitude. Get your attitude together. I'm not changing my attitude because I just don't like them. I just don't care. Really? You don't like my child. You don't like God's child. You That's what I'm talking when I say my child. You don't like my child. You don't like somebody that I created. You don't care about nobody that I created. Okay, okay. so I'm going to go on to, be, to talking about being uh, obedient. Uh, why we should obey God. We should obey him since God is the creator. He created everything. Like the, the, the where you sitting at right now, where you standing up right now, it's him. That air you breathing, he created it. Okay, You're, the way you build, the way you look, he did that. The, everything that you, the food that you're, t- you're tasting, everything that you touch, God created. Everything in this world, God created. That's why you should obey, obey him because he can take everything away from you, even your breath. He can take your breath away. It's people that are just dying or uh, going through trying to breathe. And he's allowing you to breathe his air and you're going to be disobedient to him. My God. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> but if you want to go back, you need a scripture for that. That's Deuteronomy 4, 35 through 40 on why you should obey God. What happens if you, um, obey or disobey God to those who obey him? He promises blessings to those who disobey him cursing. That's in Deuteronomy 11, 27 through 28, 27 and 10. And, um, Joshua 5 and 6. Being obedient to God's word. Um, what happened when Christ obeyed? When he obeyed, um, it brings salvation. Your obedience throughout the life, even to death. Like you bring salvation. What do you remember they say salvation is free? We, we, he brings salvation. Like you want to be obedient. That's where your, your blessings that God has for you. Feel like I did what God is just like in what God is asking us to, or he's, he told us to, to give, to pay our tithing. And we being those disobedient with that. We now we, we won't make our kids obey. You do like I say, do I said clean up your room. I said, wash the dishes. I said, do this. We want our kids to obey, but we don't want to obey God. I'm not, I'm confused by Make my kids do it, but then you're going to want them to obey God. They told you to get up there and read that Sunday school lesson. Why you didn't? Because you didn't. Your kids see what you're doing. You want them to do better in church. They watching their parent. If you saying no to everything, what you think they going to do? You can't make somebody else do something. You're not doing nothing. You being disobedient. Guess what your children do? They're disobedient as well. We, it's just all the way across being obedient to what God's, God's word is telling us to do. And we're not doing that. Um, we're talking about um, being obedient when what uh, Adam was. He disobeyed God. He disobeyed him and he brought a disaster to the human race. What? 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 Because he, he been those. This, so he listened to somebody else. He didn't do what God said. He did his own thing. He did his own thing. Genesis three and six and Genesis three and eleven. Genesis 3 and 12, Romans 5 and 12, Romans 5 and 15, and Romans 5 and 19. You can't, you can't be disobedient. It's, so it didn't start when you got here. It didn't just like, oh, I'm just going to be disobedient after you got here. No, no. This was way back before we got here. That folks were being disobedient. So if you know if it's in the Bible and people were there, what they say is nothing new under the sun. So if it was in the Bible then and it still matters, 
Even though that's in the Old Testament, it still matters today. Because listen, I just said Romans 5 and 19, that's in the New Testament. So don't think because it's in the Old, oh, that don't matter. If it's 66 books in the Bible, all of the books matter. You can't pick and choose. Like I was talking about the Ten Commandments a few minutes ago. Some people feel like, oh, I'm just going to obey five. And the other five don't matter, but I'm going to pick the five that I want to obey. It doesn't work like that. It, it said ten commandments, it, 10 commandments, it didn't say five. Because if it said five commandments, that's all it would have said. It's all it would have did. It would have said five commandments, but it didn't. It said ten. So you have to obey all ten commandments. You can't pick and choose what you want to do out of the Bible. You can't pick and choose how you want to tell God what you're not going to do and what you're going to do. Try God. Try to do it his try to do it your way and see what happens to you by doing it his by doing it your way. And see how God how he does and you're gonna be like, listen, God, okay, you won. You know, you I'm I'm giving it back to you because you won, because I, I just can't. I just can't. But let's go back to this tithing though, because that's important. That's important. A lot of people don't feel like that's important. I said this the other day, and I think some people jumped off my live, and maybe that's because that was getting ready to show up, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it again. Um tithing. Back in 2020, if you didn't go to church, your church closed for the, because of the pandemic, um, you didn't make it because of work, or you just didn't feel safe by going, or whatever the case may be, whatever. I mean, I don't know what your reasons is. If you didn't go, or if you didn't pay your tithing from January, I'm from, from the last, let me just say the last time you attended church, the last time you paid tithing up until today, if you have not paid your tithing, you still owe God that. Plus a late fees, plus late fees. You owe him all of that because you haven't, you haven't did what God required you to do. So if you haven't been to church since November, 2019, and that was the last time you paid tithing, you need to go back and calculate all of that. And you owe God all of that. Okay. There is no, there, you can't get bypass God. You can't skip over him. You can't try to, uh, outdo him. You can't run no scam on God. Cause God ain't going to let you run no scam on him. You can't run no scam on God. You can't try to, uh, trick him. You can't try to come up with no little ways. Well, God, if I just give you like half of this, we get our income tax and we'll give it to the, we'll give it to the restaurant folks. They now listen, y'all know I said this before too. When they give you your receipt, it's thrown out at fifteen percent. And I look at it and I say, Lord, they want more than you asked them. The requirement that you're asking of of, of me, you, they want they start out at fifteen. You said ten, and they want fifteen. They want me to give me what they want me to give them more than I give you. It's a no for me. Like a no. How much is it less than this ten percent? Some of them start out at eighteen. Some of them start out at eight, uh, twenty-one. Whatever the case may be, but we freely give it to them. That's not obedience <laughs> because they put it on the receipt and say that's gratuity. That's not obedience. That's a choice. But when you're giving your tithing, that's a requirement. That's not a choice. So let's try this again. If you haven't been to church since 2015, the last find out the last time you went to church and you actually gave tithing, I just showed up because we show up to church and we want to create a God. I came to church today. I'm so proud of me. That's not, that's not good. That's not good. Don't be proud of that. Okay. So, when you, if you ain't been since 2015 and you, that was the last time you gave your tithing, you need to calculate. If you have been sending your tithing in and you still haven't been going to church, that's fine. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about people that still pocketing theirs. They still got theirs and they, and they don't spend it on something else and they still having a hard time. They still rubbing two nickels together. That's what my mama and them used to say. You still rubbing two nickels together. <laughs> you still trying to figure out life because you haven't been doing what God told you. You haven't been obedient to God's word. God told you to do something, and which is a requirement. It's in, it's in Malachi. We, do we need to pull up Malachi to make sure that we are aware that, uh, hold on, we're going to pull up Malachi and we're going to talk about this tithing that's obedient, being obedient to him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. What scripture is that? You don't know which one that one is. You don't know. Okay. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We, we have to be obedient to God's word and y'all just hold on just a minute. We're going to pull up Malachi, Malachi 3. Let's pull it up real quick. I'm typing so fast. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to talk about it. I know folks say that's in the Old Testament. Give me what the other. In the. We're going to talk about being, uh, be, being obedient to God's word. I'm telling you all of that. You owe God all of that. If you have not attended it or if you have attended 
or you have any, you've been doing virtual, you still need to send in your tithing. I'm pretty sure your church have a system to send your tithing in. You all got that. Don't worry about if that's going to the pastor. Don't worry about if he, he's just going to go buy something new with that. He going to go do all these things. Don't worry about all these other things. Once you do the requirement that's that being old, once you be obedient to God, what he told you to do with your tithing, once that's off for you, what happens after the money after then is not even your concern. You do what God told you to do. If he said do that, you leave it alone because if God feels like, if God sees that somebody is dealing with the money incorrectly, he's going to correct them. I promise you he's going to get them. And well, again, you don't want to be whooped by God. Listen, let me pull this up. Malachi 3. Uh, will a man rob God? This is, this is Malachi 3 and 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but yea, say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, being disobedient. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And the storehouse is the church, okay? To the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. For I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour ye out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall now destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call ye blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. See the part where you, you, you. For um, in verse nine, ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even in this whole nation. You being disobedient to God, you're going to be cursed. You want you being disobedient because you once you know that what you're supposed to do tithing wise, once you are aware God has you have been taught those things and you do those things, you are held accountable for those things. You don't just throw it out and just say, hey. He got gonna, if you don't know, he can't hold anything against you that you're not aware of. But again, if you have not been attending, you have not been giving your turn and your tithing in to some to, to your church. You have not been doing it. You owe God from the time the last time you paid tithing, and you can come contact whoever's in charge of the of the finances and find out when was the last time that you paid tithing. You owe God that plus some them late fees. Cause you know when you pay your rent late, you pay your more, they they charge you late fees. They give you a penalty for not paying it on time. Why we do? Why we? Why we shortchange God? We we don't mind giving. I, listen, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna move on to something else about this. But we worry about what happens to the funds after it's been it's been turned over into the church. Instead of us, instead of us, because when 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 these celebrities come into town, we give them that plus some. Plus, I I seen it. I seen it when these celebrities come into town. They charge you for the ticket. They charge you a facility fee. They charge you for a service fee. They charge you taxes. They charge you all of that. And guess what? We pay it with no choice. I told you years ago, it was a young lady that went. That used to work with us. It was, um, I think, Beyonce or somebody was coming into town. She paid four hundred dollars flat. And that was out of state. She flew to. And she still had to buy a plane ticket. She flew out of state to go see her. No questions asked. But when the man of God stands before us. And over the pulpit, and he says, he reads this scripture, Malachi 3, and he started telling us and teaching us about tithing. We got an attitude. Well, I got to see. I got to put. God didn't have to see when he woke you up this morning. God didn't have to see when he let you breathe another day. God didn't have to see when he allowed you to move all the activities of your limbs. You may have been hurting, a little sore here and there, but God allowed you to wake up one more time. God didn't have to see when he allowed you to walk outside your house, your apartment, or wherever you live to get in the car. He didn't. He didn't have to let you see to crank that car up and it was still gas. And he didn't have to see when he allowed you to pull away and you were safe and sound. He didn't allow any hurt, harm, or danger to harm you in any type of way. He didn't have to see to make it to your for you to make it to your destination. He didn't have to see if you to allow you to go to the job that's paying for the car, that's paying for the place that you just left. He didn't have to see, but you got to see if you got it. 
You got to see what you got left over. You got to, you've been dis disobedient to God, but you got to see. He didn't have to see for those things. He didn't have to see that you had food to eat, that you had lunch money, that you had. He didn't have to see for these things. He didn't have to see for you to have your lights on when you came back home, that your water was still running when you came home. He didn't have to see. See, we, when we have to start putting, when we have to decide whether I'm going to do right by God or if I'm going to do right by my friend, your friend don't matter because your friend should be doing the same thing God is telling you to do. So you need to tell your friend, get like me instead of you trying to get like something, get like this. Him. This is this, he, God didn't have to see those things. We got to be obedient to God's word. God been telling us these things for far way too long. Even before me, He's been telling us these things. But we just decide we just don't want to do it because we think we got time. Coronavirus didn't have time. <laughs> he didn't get it. Didn't give us plenty of time. People were started passing away all way last. We've been almost doing this for about a year now. And he God didn't have to see that He didn't give you the coronavirus. He didn't have to see. To see if you went to take the test five, six, seven, eight times and you still came out negative. He didn't have to see to make that happen. He did it because he, he, he already know what kind of child he got. But see, by us being disobedient, all those things that I said, he can allow to happen to you. It ain't too late. It's not too late to get the virus. It's not too late for him to turn your lights off and you don't have the money. It's not too late for him to, for them to repo your car. It's not too late for any of these things. Being obedient to God's word is what we should be doing. If the man of God, your pastor, your bishop, your, your, whoever your leader is, your overseer, your apostle, I'm trying to cover them all, your evangelist, your missionary, whoever your deacon is in charge, whoever is in charge of your ministry, if they told you to do something, find yourself doing it. Don't be disobedient to the man of God, the woman of God, whoever is in charge. A lot of times folks lay things on your Now, I do things decently in the order because sometimes we just all, we just be all out of order. But I'm just saying, when God lays something on the pastor's uh, heart for things to be done, we all should be doing something. You shouldn't have no pew member. Everybody should be in the, somebody's church working. Doing something. I don't care if you are the person that come up there and make sure the doors is open on Sunday morning. I don't care. And you make sure it's, it's warm in there for everybody during the winter. I don't care if you are the person that makes sure the trash is picked up off the parking lot at the yard. I don't care if you are the person that makes sure that the kitchen is clean, the bathrooms are clean. I don't care what, long as you're working in a ministry, you're able to do something. You're able to get your, get yourself up, get yourself dressed, get yourself there. And you doing it to the, to the best of your ability. You're not slouchy with it. You're not doing it. Oh, they always asking me to do something don't feel like you owe like god listen he owe you a favor or something don't don't ever feel like god owes you oh he he asked me to do this because no no baby no no i promise you that church must go on if you say no i don't want to do it if you say i don't feel like it, i don't think that's me or whatever that's your business but be careful be careful. God hears everything. He sits high and he looks low. He see everything that we're doing all the way, all the way around. Even when we think we sneaking, we hiding, we going here, what they say, shucking and jiving. <laughs> when we're doing all those things, God sees it all. Make sure you find yourself doing something in the ministry. Make sure you're being busy in the ministry. If you're busy in the ministry and doing something productive and positive, you don't have time for mess. You ain't got time to be doing all it, being involved in some scams or some fraudulent stuff. You got your mind and your heart set on the right thing. God is not playing with us. Being disobedient to his word, being disobedient to what God is telling us to do is not what the, that's not the thing for 2021 and, and, and beyond. It's not, if you've been disobedient, change that. Today, you can change that right now. You don't have to wait till Sunday because you might not make it. Your disobedience should stop today. Your disobedience should not even go any further today. I'm not talking about when somebody call your family and something. You'll never do nothing with us. No, no. But what God is telling you to do. I told you you got to know the difference between hearing God's voice and hearing, hearing the devil's voice. You got to know the difference. But when God, is, he got an assignment. I told y'all a while back. We all have an assignment. We got to find out what our assignment is. And your assignment can be as simple as um, being a witness to somebody at the grocery store. To be a witness at somebody at the tire shop, somebody at the gas station, to be a witness when you walk inside your job. Somebody at your job needs to be saved. Somebody at your job needs to be obedient to God's word. Somebody at your job needs to hear what's being said tonight on somebody's live talking about God. Somebody needs to hear it. It ain't just at your job. It's somebody probably in your house that needs to be obedient to God. But make sure when you're telling somebody to be obedient to God that you're obedient too. Because if they see you being disobedient, you can't tell me nothing and you're not doing it. So I told y'all when Bishop asked me along. 
long time ago. This was a while back about um, um, speaking or whatever. I said I got to do what God tell me. I, I can't tell people on God's day, this is what I do, you know, talking about all this and I don't do it. I told y'all a while back that I was, um, I had been talking about forgiveness. This was probably like 2019. I was talking about forgiveness and forgiving, yeah, nah, 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 whatever. And I was looking back and I said, but you're not doing it though. Like you got some, some people that you probably need to go and ask for forgiveness for. So I did that. I did what God told me to do because that was an assignment way back then. And was it uncomfortable? It was because I didn't know how the reaction was going to be. But when I tell you it was nothing but love since then, absolutely. That's what it is. You can't let those things hold you back, but you can't tell your kids to do something that you're not doing. I know we say, do as I say, not as I do. But how is that right? How is that right? Because God told you to do what he say. You ain't doing it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Being, being obedient to God's word is what he want us to do. So whatever is being said to you, whatever your assignment is, whatever is laid on you, on your heart from God for you to do, Please do what God is asking you to do. You're going to be sorry if you don't. Quit giving God an excuse on why you can't. Stop coming up with negative thoughts, negative comments. I know this is how it's going to be. When we are, I told you, when I walk inside a new Freeman Chapel doors or any church that I go, go to, I'm coming with the expectation of receiving God. Whatever is in that service for me to have, whatever is in that service for me to grasp hold of and to take along with me to make me to be a better person, that's what I'm going to grasp hold of. That's what I'm going to hold on to. That's what I'm going to get. Because I, I came with this mindset that I'm going to have, but this service is going to be awesome. Awesome. I may mess up on a song. I may not. I may forget my note every time or two. You know, sometimes it happens, whatever. But my thing is, I'm giving it my best. I'm not going to I'm not going to give God no anything. I'm not going to be scared to open up my mouth when it comes down to serving God. I'm not going to be scared to to see who looking around at me and I'm just going to hold it in. No, because when God told me to hold up my ends to get that being out my bow, guess what I did? I holds up my arms to get that being out my bow because I want I want to be obedient to his word. Whatever he's saying, do whatever he's telling me to do in this season, in this time, whatever he say, do right now at seven. 51 p.m. I'm going to do it. If he told me to get the bed out your boat, that's what, if he told you to sing a song, if he told you to get up and just give a testimony, some of us are afraid to testify. Do we know how to testify? Because we're scared. We don't want to be obedient. God been telling us for weeks. Testify. Get that testimony. Somebody going to hate on They going to hate on you if you don't say it or if you do say it. They going to hate. So if they hate on you, it don't even matter. You doing what God told you to do. A lot of people don't like this. A lot of folks don't like to talk about testimonies because they don't want to. I don't want nobody to feel a way about me. No, no, baby. This is about you and God. Forget what other people got to say. Don't even worry about them. Who are they to judge? Because we all got problems. We all got issues. We all going through something or been through something or getting ready to go through something. But why am I going to hold that back? Because if God told me to get that testimony and you don't make it to church the next Sunday to get that testimony because something doesn't happen to you. Now you're in the hospital, you're sick and you can't get out. Then what you going to do? Because then you still didn't get your testimony. You may not even get a chance to tell it. You know your testimony helps somebody else. It ain't about bragging. It ain't about I got to tell the world that I just came into this type of money. You ain't got to do all of that. All I'm saying is do what, God, what is laid on your heart to do. We don't know how to testify because we ain't done it. We ain't done it since we were probably a little bitty and, and we afraid. No, you get up there and you tell the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. How he has brought you out of so many different things. How he brought you out of so many different dark days, depression, um, heartache, um, going through some mental issues or going through some health problems that you didn't even know how you was going to get out of. But you're able to breathe again. You're able to taste your food again. You'll be able, you're able to touch again. You're able to move around again. This is a testimony. These are things that God has brought you out. Up. He brought you out of an abusive relationship. He brought you out of being homeless. These are testimonies and we can't be afraid to testify how God has brought us through. We can't be afraid that that's a, a being obedient. He been telling you for a while to testify what you're afraid of. He been telling you for a while to sing that song that's been laid on your heart for three weeks. What you're afraid of. Don't be afraid about talking about the goodness of Jesus. Don't because he's not afraid to just give you the blessings that you've been getting. He ain't afraid to give them to you. Tell somebody about it. Give that testimony that God's been, been laying on your heart for a while. You might not have it, uh, have it directly how you want to say it, but when you get up there, God's going to give you the words to say because you're getting up there and you about, it's by being sincere. It's by being you. It's by being something what God has had you, what he has you to be. You're not afraid 
afraid. You're not scared. You being obedient to God's word and what other people have to say about your testimony. Don't even worry about it. That's your testimony. That's your blessing. They trying to figure out why they still not blessed because they worried about your testimony. Don't even worry about it. Be obedient to God. God has got some things in store for you, but you got to be obedient to his word. You want your body to be healed. You want God to heal, to heal your, your family. You want your God to heal your spouse. You want God to bring you through some stuff that you've been, been dealing with for a while, but you're afraid to talk about it. You're afraid to bring it, bring it to the forefront. God is getting ready to let all of those things go. He's getting ready to just let go and let loose of all of those things that's been holding you down. The things that held you bound, that's holding you back from being that wonderful person that you are. The people that's been talking about you, they've been breaking you down. They got dirt all over you. They don't even know how to approach you because they've been talking so bad about you. He about to show all, he about to expose all these people that's been doing all these things to you. All them things that's been holding you uh, from speaking up and saying these things about the goodness of God. Let those things go. Release those things. Be obedient to what God is saying. If he told you to go pick up somebody and bring them to church, go pick them up. If he told you to get up there and tell that testimony, tell that testimony. If he told you to join the choir, join the choir. Don't matter if you can sing or not, but that's laid on your heart. You're going to give it your best. You're going to sing your, you're going to give it your all. You ain't going to be afraid to stand up there and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for you. I may be off key. I may not know the words of the song, but I'm going to give my best. Don't hold any of those things back. Don't let that stop you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. God is doing some wonderful things and he got some great things in store for you, but you can't be afraid. You can't be scared. You can't, you can't be willing to just close your fist up and just look over and see who's looking at you. Let that go. Release. Don't hold it down when God is holding up. He's trying to tell you, I'm trying to release these things in you, but you still don't hold, you still holding on to it. It don't even matter if it's talking about releasing people in your life. They don't even mean you no good anymore. You've been friends for 25, 30 years, but they, they, they're a burden to you now. Let them go. If that means that's the obedience he wants you to do, be that, do that obedience thing he told you to, to, to do. Obey that. OK, if God is telling you to, to let family go, stop calling, stop texting that man you holding on to that ain't doing you no good. He ain't paying no bills. He ain't he ain't going to work. He ain't taking out the trash. He ain't cooking. He dropping you off in your car. He doing all these things. He, he going everywhere in your car and you picking you up on work late. He told you to let those things go. Be obedient. Let those things go. They don't even matter anymore. That those things that you, you afraid to speak up on. You don't know how you can help somebody, some young lady, some young girl. So they won't go through those same things that you have went through. Those same trials and tribulation that you went through. They may still go, still go through it, but they won't go through it as bad as because they're listening to you. You pray for it. You, even when you're praying, your obedience, God wants us to pray more and we're not even praying more. You know, we doing more. We Facebooking more. We on, we on social media more, but our obedience is supposed to be somewhere else. Where is your obedience? Are you being obedient to God's word? God's been telling, working on you and telling you to get some things done. He got some overflow of blessings for us. He got so much increase for us, but we, we still holding on to some things that you know how when your cup is full of water and God is trying to bless you, he, he's, he's trying to tell you if you just go ahead and drink that water or pull it out I can throw some because he can't put no more in here it's full to the top like your water's filled how can he put some more in there and it's filled to the top God got some overflow of blessings for us but we got to be willing to be obedient to his word do what God is asking you to do I had more to say but um <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get to that I, I kept elaborating on the other stuff but I just want us to be more obedient to God's word I want God to, I want us to pay attention to what God is telling us to do and not worry about the other people, the naysayers, the haters, the people that's watching us on social media, the people that want to be us. They don't know how hard it is to be who you are, but they want to be you. They want to be in your, they want your lifestyle, but they don't know what you're going through to hold on to that lifestyle or to just be you. And you trying to look in and say, what do I have that you will want or what you want over here? And I don't even know what it is. It's, it's hard for me to see. Oh, okay. It's me being obedient to God and you not. Oh, I figured it out. Okay. I got it. Thank you. I appreciate it. So anyway, <laughs> That's what it is. Folks, like, you're just like, why would you want to? And you look at, okay, so I'm not going to go into that anymore. Be obedient to God's word. I pray that we do better with that, that we obey. If God, the man of God, a woman of God is telling us to do something that he's asking us to do. I pray that we do those things. I pray that we go further and further and get closer to God. This is the time now. If you have not got closer to God now in this day, the time is now for us to get closer to him. He's not playing with us. 
He's taking our loved ones away that you probably, like I said earlier, you probably just talked to earlier today. Every time, every day that I get, I get on social media, I see ripped to somebody. And you know what it is? It's, it's the, at the end of it, it's saying due to COVID or because uh, um, having complications with COVID. This is something that's a daily disease that is rapid in our, in our nation. And we can pray this thing out. We can we can get through this thing. God is 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 in the healing business. He's in the covering business. He listen. He's even exposing some things that we probably didn't even aware that was gonna be ever in the in the forefront or whatever. But God is doing those things. And my thing is this: if you're obedient to God's word, you doing what God is asking you to do. You don't even have to worry about nothing. He take care of his kids. He makes sure his kids are good. He makes sure his families are good he covers he covers us daily but you cannot be scared to obey his word you cannot be afraid to stand out stand on the word of god and push forward on what god is telling you to do he loves you i promise you he loves you even when we doing wrong we doing bad we dismiss him we pick him up when we got time we think about him when we need him you're supposed to be thanking god when everything is going well when your life is on track when your life is not on track even when you feel it and when you don't i told you pastor key got a song he say that in even when you feel it and when you don't you continue to, to do what God is asking you to do. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to serve God. Don't be afraid to stand on the word of God. Don't be afraid. I, a lot of times our obedient, our, what God is wanting us to be obedient to is just his word, period. And we're afraid to be obedient just to his word, just to say some things nicely about God, just to tell somebody some great things about God. Be obedient to God's word. He want us to do that. He want us to be better at what we've been doing. And you don't have to be nasty to somebody because they nasty to you. Because they're rude to you. You don't have to be. You know, you kill people with kindness. I do it in a minute. I just be like, oh, and Kyla say, mama, you can do that. I absolutely can. Because I don't let nobody steal my joy. You can't steal my joy. If it's already joy within me, I'm already a happy and energetic person. I'm going to let somebody come in and change that about me. Who are you? If somebody going to change it, I'm going to let it be God. Okay? Because he's the one that have control anyway. Okay? You coming in and trying to change on who I am or what I do. I can't allow you to have control over me. The devil is already defeated. Okay? So you can't come at me like that. It's already done. It's not, I'm already joyous. I'm happy and I'm excited. And I'm, I'm doing things the will of, doing the will of God. And you're going to come in and try to change any of those things because you feel like that's what you want to do. No, ma'am. No, sir. Okay. <laughs> I said I was going to stop. I'm going to stop. I pray out tonight. It was something that I said that was helpful to you all. I pray that if, if you missed it, you can go back and listen to the beginning. Also, this will be this um, tonight's Tuesday night Bible study will be on the God's Day podcast. Um, you could tune into the podcast on all of your uh, podcast platforms. Um, I will attach the link on here. If Bishop allowed me to attach the link on here. So you can go back and listen to this live as well. Um, also, I want to tell you, I invite you all out tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. We will be doing our Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. We will be at the New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. The address is 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. Well, the great, amazing, wonderful pastor is none other than the Bishop Dwight Collins. Please come on out with us to, um, tomorrow night if you can and will. We're just there for an hour. Last week, we had an awesome time. We did Bible drill last week, and it was hilarious, and we had a great time. So we're excited about tomorrow night. I don't know what Bishop is going to do tomorrow night, but whatever it is, I'm excited about it because it's about learning more about God. It's about doing what God tells I'm being obedient, okay? So <laughs> I want to make sure I'm doing that. So again, that's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. The address again is 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. With a great, amazing, wonderful pastor, There's none other than the Bishop Dwight Collins. On Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. is our Sunday morning worship. Please come out and join in with us. Our Again, the address is 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. With a great, amazing, wonderful pastor, There's none other than the Bishop Dwight Collins. Please come out, check us out. We also will be Facebook Live on Sunday. Um, so please tune in if you're not able to join in with us. We do social distancing. It's not a whole lot of us that come in, but when we come, you you think it's a bunch of us because uh, we just love to praise God. So come on in, um, and that's on Sunday at 7 I'm mean, sorry, at 11 o'clock a.m. And then on Tuesday night, Tuesday night at um, next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. is our Tuesday night Bible study. 
um, again, and I don't know what Bishop will be doing, but if I'm here, if he's here, please tune in with us. If you have not already liked our page, please come and like our page. We would love for you to, if you, um, you want to share any of our lives, you're more than welcome to our Tuesday night Bible studies, our Sunday morning worships, any of our programs. We've been doing this for about five, six years now. So you are more than welcome to do that on next Saturday, which is January 23rd is our church's barbecue um and that if you have never had this barbecue listen it's nothing but jesus y'all know i talk about the lemon pies from water burger but listen i'm gonna put this above the water burger lemon pies okay um but that is on next saturday i have the flyer y'all pray for me i just been all over i had a lot to do i <laughs> got a lot going on um but please please by all means please um Help us out with our barbecue that will be on next Saturday at starting at 9 a.m. Uh, we will be doing um, it'll be all on the flyer where you can buy pans of meat or you can buy plates. However you feel, we will have assorted drinks, assorted desserts and whatever sides. But please um, help us out with this as much as you possibly can. And also, um, that like I said, that will be on next Saturday at 9 a.m., um, so if y'all have any prayer requests, I see two of them that are already popped up on here for our prayer requests. Please, you can, um, add those on there. Do you want me to announce the fifth Sure. Um, on January 31st at 8 a.m., we will be at the Greater Gilgal Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church. I think it's just Baptist Church. On January 31st at 8 o'clock a.m. If you would like to join in with us and be there with us, we would love for you to come. That is a Sunday morning. That's fifth Sunday. Please, please, we would love. And I will um, have the address for you all so y'all know when uh, where we will be located or whatever. But it's in Oak Cliff. Um, and y'all will be, um, you could just come and join with us on that Sunday morning at 8 a.m. I think I covered all of our announcements, at least for the month of January. I think I covered all of them. Um, further announcements or any flyers that needs to be posted will be posted um, once I get it approved by Bishop on um, what's on it. So I will let you all know about that. So I pray again. I pray tonight that it is something that has been said that is very helpful um, to you all. We're talking about being obedient, being obedient to God's word. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about being obedient and be, uh, obeying, you know, even when you talk about your spouse telling you to just to you sing your vows to love, honor and obey. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, but that's 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 in there. OK, so I'm not going to go back into obedience and being obey or uh, talking about being uh, talking about obey. Uh, OK, Miss Felicia, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. My God. Okay. We definitely got, definitely got you on here. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm trying to write down the others that I know about. Prayer requests. You have something you need to say? You're going to have to because I got it the way I got to set up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Bishop is coming over and... Um, <laughs> No, because listen. Anyway, Bishop is coming. Um, I do. We have uh, for prayer. We have Miss Felicia, the passing of her husband. Um, Miss uh, Miss Tracy Foley, um, Brother Alvin Benson. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> also, uh, pray for the certain certain Captain family. Um, a friend of mine's um, passed away last week and they'll be funeralizing him this week um so keep him in prayer also pray for sister t cowherd i have you on here as well and also pray for the rome um family a friend of mine's um her kids father passed from COVID um as well so these are friends of ours that have passed on and we just want to keep the family in prayer also for those that may not say anything about them having it or maybe dealing with side effects because a lot of people have had um COVID and they're dealing with the, the aftermath of it and um we just want to make sure that we keep them in prayer uh pray for miss felicia's daughter-in-law's dad he's in the hospital with COVID. Uh, Miss Felicia, 
daughter-in-law dead okay i just want to make sure i write get all of these things oh and also miss miss foley is pray, uh asking for uh prayer for her finances for finances miss mm -hmm. foley tracy foley okay we have it all down on here i was trying to look at it as it popped up over here too um but I just want to make sure I'm pray I pray I'm not missing anybody. I think I missed somebody last week and I'm so sorry. But I'm just going back through and make sure we don't miss anybody that's asking for prayer. Um I seen Brother Cooper on here earlier. How are you feeling, Brother Cooper? While I try to go through this real quick and see who else is needing prayer. But just pray for each other. Um Oh, I didn't see that, Miss Felicia. I'm gonna say something about that in just a second. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I didn't see that earlier. <laughs> That's why I wanted to go back through here and make sure that I see all of that, the comments. Um, but to make sure we keep others in prayer that are dealing with this and they haven't been able to say anything, um, pray for your, your neighbors, your family, your friends, your, your, everybody, everybody needs prayer. Um, I'm also, I'm putting him on here and I know people going to feel a ways about it, but whatever. Pastor Key, he had, uh, COVID as well. And he's, um, say he's feeling much better. His family had it. Um, so pray for them as well. So it, it's not bypassing because of your finances. It's not bypassing because of what you look like. Is touching a lot of people. So just be in prayer for a lot. Let all this stuff go that does not matter because it's going to cause problems later. You, you don't know where life is going to take you, okay? Um, so, and I also want to talk about what Ms. Felicia just said. If you got your 600, you're supposed to pay tithing off of that as well. Amen. All right. You're supposed to pay tithing. Anything that's an increase, you're supposed to pay tithing off of. Just in case you made it enough. I didn't see your comments just now, but you're absolutely correct about that. Any type of increase, you're supposed to pay tithing off of. If somebody give you $10, you've got to give tithing off of that. Amen. Yes, all right. Okay. Um, here's Bishop. <laughs> yes, we do, Miss Felicia. We have to pray for each other. Here come Bishop, y'all. You going to come sit right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> here's Bishop, y'all. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Ms. Collin did a wonderful job on tonight speaking about obedience, asking you about your assignment. Uh, we do know that. Oh, hello, Sister Felicia. How you doing? I was going to call you, and I'm still going to call you, so expect a phone call from me uh, pretty soon. Uh, you know, I have to check on you. Uh, you, you, you're not a, you haven't checked my hand yet, but you're a member of New Freedom. So uh, I'm just waiting. Shake your hand and make it official. My God. Amen. But what I'm saying is... Uh, she was asking about your assignment, and, and uh, God gives us assignments, and he doesn't always speak directly to you. Sometimes he speaks through someone mm. to you about your assignment. My God. And, and, and the, the pastor is the one that God shows where you need to be. Mm. And let me tell you a little secret here. God is not going to take you from a place mm. where you're needed My to God. send you to a place where you're not needed. All right, Bishop. If they already have an usher boy and you're an usher, but you're already an usher at your church, why would he send you to a church that's already got an usher? My God. If you're a musician and you're playing the, the instrument at your church, God is not going to send you somewhere else where they already have a full music staff. All right. Other churches have pastors, so why would God send me over there? Hmm. When New Freeman has a pastor of their own. That's right. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If God gives you an assignment, do it. That's right. That's right. You can either do it the easy way or the hard way. My God. But you're going to eventually do what the mm -hmm. Lord said do. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, if he gives you an assignment, do the assignment. Mm -hmm. Because uh, 
like she said, and I told them this Sunday at church, I'd rather all y'all line up and whoop me than mm. God whoop me. Mm. Everybody on this live, I'd rather that all y'all get in line mm. and say, I'm going to whoop Pastor Collins rather than God whooping Pastor mm. Collins. I love you too, Sister Tracy Foley. And uh, you want God to uh, bless your finances. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you this. You can give your way out of poverty. My God. H hear me what I'm saying. By giving your way out of poverty, God said, and if you pay your tithing, hmm. he said, I'll open up the windows when does of heaven. Have Come on! And I'll pour out blessings that you won't have room, room enough. enough. To receive it. My God. He even said that at the end of that, I will rebuke the devil. Hmm. I will stop him from hurting whatever you plan. My God. But at the end, it said, every nation shall Shit. call you blessed. Come on. For you shall be a delightsome land, Sick. said the Lord. If I repeat it every Sunday, mm -hmm. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And I'm going to say it until I get 100% tithe paid <laughs> at New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist My Church. God. Only thing I'm saying is you can give your way mm -hmm. That's right. out of poverty. That's right. You can give your way out of being bankrupt. Mm. You can give your way out of being uh, in a financial hole. Mm -hmm. Give. That's right. And it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Good measure. Y'all yeah. ain't saying that today. Come on now. See, if you, if, you, if, if you bless God, God will bless you. Yes, he will. But you first got to bless God. That's right. He'll turn around and he'll bless you. That's right. Amen. I want to pray for everybody. Uh, Dr. Cooper, I'm happy that you are feeling well. Uh, and I, I saw that you said that earlier, so I'm happy that you're feeling better. Uh, the devil can't keep a good man down. Mm. Hear, hear me what I'm saying? Mm. He may try to keep you down, but he can't keep a good man down. That's right. Sister Felicia, I'm I'm happy you even own him. My God. Uh, because of what you're dealing with. God does not make a mistake. Yeah. That's right. He know exactly what he's doing. That's right. You hold your head up in spite of what you're going through. Mm. You hold your head up. That's right. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. That's right. And I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I've i never had the experience of, of, of my spouse is still here. Amen. But what I'm saying is, my mom is gone. Dad is gone. Mm -hmm. I, I got a sister that's gone. Mm -hmm. I got grandparents that's gone. Mm -hmm. So I know what it feels like to experience what you're experiencing. That's right. I just don't know exactly what you're going through right mm -hmm. now. Only thing I can say is God knows. Yes, he does. He's still in control. Yes, he is. Don't let, don't let nobody fool you. Hmm. And tell you that God don't know what he's doing. Hmm. He know exactly what he's doing. Hmm. And everybody else, we're all going through something. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep your head up. We all need prayer. Sister Tracy Foley, you keep your head up. Mm -hmm. But as I told you, give your way. Mm -hmm. Give your way out of poverty. Mm -hmm. I promise you, the Lord will bless you. Mm -hmm. He will reward you. Mm -hmm. Because you are being obedient. To what he said in his word. That's right. So who all has prayer requests? I mean, who all do we need to pray for on tonight? Of course, Miss Miss Felicia. Uh huh. Miss Tracy Foley. Uh huh. Um, Benson. Brother Benson. I said Pastor Key. Um, what so is the T. Calher, certain the certain Captain family. Oh, that what the they wrong family, and um, also Miss Felicia's daughter-in-law's dad, who has COVID. Okay, you want to pray for him? Because you, you, you did this, I'm just asking. <laughs> it don't matter. Okay, well I'm gonna bring Sister Collins back. I can do a prayer. I don't have to. <laughs> she 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 did a wonderful job. I just told her to come on and just cap it off. <laughs> I just wanted to come on and just encourage somebody on tonight to to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Quit being disobedient. My God. Quit quit. I'm gonna lead a church. The church ain't did nothing to you. Bishop. That's what gets me about us and the church. My church God. ain't did nothing to you. My Why God. would you leave a place where you're being taught? Mm. I know at New Freeman, see, this is a place where the table is spread. Listen. And the feast of the Lord is going on. Oh. We feed the members at New Freeman. Listen. I've seen them grow. Mm. I've seen them used to be this big. Now they're growing. My God. I know, and I'm not, I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about in the Lord. Yeah. They're growing. Mm. 
Why would you want to leave a place where you're growing at? Mm -hmm. It's mess in every church. Yes, it is. <laughs> and if you leave New Freeman and go somewhere, you're going to take your mess mm -hmm. with you. God bless you. I'm going to bring this college back. Baby, y'all don't, go don't, don't start with me. <laughs> don't, don't start with me. Take your mess with you. Bishop. Mm. Amen. She did do an awesome job. I was sitting on the sideline just looking at her. I almost said, squall, girl, squall. No, squall. Yeah. We, I'm going to stay here, and I'm just going to pray from here. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to. Yeah, I could just pray from here. Um, Father God, we come to you as humbly as we know how. We thank you, Lord, for this um, word tonight. We thank you what was. We thank you for what was said. We pray that whatever is being said, it helps, helps someone else to go on further and to see what God has more of you have for them. Lord, we just thank you for just being just a wonderful God that you are. You're an awesome God. You're an amazing God. We thank you for um, us being obedient to your word, to have this Bible study tonight, to press on, and to have the word of God to be um, told to others about you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for every little bit of thing that you do. Lord, we thank you for um, Miss Felicia and the passing of our husband, Lord. We just want to lift them up in prayer as they go through whatever is needed to go through to lay away their their uh, their loved one. Pray for her for strength, for healing, to just get her through this, to let her know that you do not make any mistakes. Lord, we just thank you just for it all, um, just for allowing her to have him as long as she has had him to be a part of her life. And we just thank you for it all. Lord, we just pray for Miss um, Tracy Foley. Whatever she's going through, heal her body, touch her, Lord. Whatever she's needing, finances, whatever she's needing with um, family, whatever she's needing from you, Lord, we just ask that you would just give it to her. Um, just heal her body, just touch her right now. Also pray for Brother Benson, whatever he's dealing with, whatever his, his desires are, we ask that you just touch him, heal him, bring him through. Touch his heart, touch his mind, touch his soul, touch him in all over, Lord Jesus. Also continue to pray for the captain and certain family, where they lay away their loved one, um, Brother Troy, certain, um, just praying for him, as praying for his family as they lay him to rest, for his daughters, for his son, for his uh, whatever, any family member that has attached to him, we just pray for him. Also pray for the Rome family as they lay their loved one to, to rest, their, their father to rest. We just pray for him, Lord. Heal that their family let them know that you don't make any mistakes also pray for sister t, t cowher whatever she's she's dealing with with her family with her grandkids with her her um whatever she's needing from you lord we just lift them up in prayer also praying for miss felicia's daughter and uh daughter-in-law's dad heal his body bring him through this lord he's gonna make it out all right he's gonna be healed he's gonna be delivered he's gonna have a testimony at the end of this lord we just thank you for just being just this great amazing god that you are we also want to pray for anybody in the world that is still dealing with COVID, that has just been healed from it. They're going through a storm. They're dealing with so many different issues. We just pray for them all. We lift them up in prayer. We touch, touch their bodies, touch their hearts, touch their finances, heal them in Jesus' name. We love you for it all. Also pray for our own bishop as he just continues to go forth into this ministry to touch New Freeman Chapel as, as a whole and individually. We just touch you. Um, we just ask you for your touch right now, Lord. We thank you for it all. And just continue to just give us the strength to just to go on and see what the end is going to be. In Jesus' name, we pray right now. We thank you for it all, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Good night. Good night.